Hello and welcome to the first Shader Sandwich tutorial! My name is Sean and I'll be taking you through a free part set of beginner tutorials that will show you through the basics of Shader Sandwich. So before we get started, I just want to quickly talk about what Shader Sandwich is and how it fits into Unity's pipeline. So you may be able to guess from the name that Shader Sandwich creates shaders. I'd hope you'd know this if you bought it. But nonetheless, what are shaders? I'm sure you've used them before, you select them in the material panel. But what are they actually doing? What do they do behind the scenes? What are the technical details? Well, I'll cover that now, in a second. First, I'm going to talk about what materials are. So in Unity, materials are simply a bunch of inputs, such as textures, colors, sliders, cube maps, and a few other different things. The material itself doesn't do any rendering, though, because it doesn't know how to use these inputs to actually display the object. For example, how should it calculate the lighting? How should it blend the texture? Should the color go to the specular, or should it be affecting the texture? Who knows? And this is where the shader comes in. This is why every material has a shader. The shader gets given these inputs from the material, and then uses them to render the object. For example, for every pixel, the shader might go, alright, I'll calculate the lighting, then I'll grab that texture, blend it with that color, add that reflection. It knows what to do with them. So the shader and the material work together to render an object. So with that out of the way, what will we be creating this part? Well, we'll be recreating a simplified version of the standard specular shader that comes with Unity. What we'll be having is the ability to select a texture, to change the color of that texture, and to also change the specularity, how reflective it is. Alright, well let's get started. So, let's open up Shader Sandwich by going into the Window menu item, and then Shader Sandwich. And here it is. So this is the intro screen, where you can select recent files, see a message of the day which I update once a year, <laughs> and also simply create a new shader. So we're just going to click New. So this is the Layers panel. You're going to want to get used to seeing this, as the bulk of shaders will be made here. Now, before we touch anything, we're going to open up a previewing window, which lets us see the shader update as we create it. So go into the Preview menu item, and open Preview Window. I'm just going to dock this to the side, it's just how I work, and there we go. So in the Preview Window, you can left-click and drag to rotate the view, and right-click and drag to move in and out. Up the top, you can change the mesh that is displayed, turn on wireframe, and a few other different things. Now, one last thing before we get started. Make sure to never do what I say. <laughs> Alright, well, you, you can do what I say, especially since I'm all-knowing, but make sure to experiment. Use different values, use different settings, tick different things, just experiment a little bit. Shader Sandwich is a very hands-on tool, and in all honesty, it's learnt best through experimentation. Trust me, if anything breaks due to it, it's completely my fault. So, yeah, feel free to experiment. Who knows, you might find something that looks way more interesting. Alright, now we can actually get started. So, Shader Sandwich uses the concept of layers, which wrap around the object. Now, this won't make sense immediately, but trust me, as we go through this, it will become extremely intuitive. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is add the color to the albedo, which controls the color of the surface. So we're going to add a new layer to this. Click the plus button down the bottom to add one. Now, immediately you'll see the preview change color, and this is because this layer, which is this color, is now getting wrapped around the object. So on the left here, you can see the layer settings. These are all the settings that the layer uses. What a surprise. One of these is the color. So for example, if we change the color, Hooray, the color changes. I'm going to make mine kind of a tomato red. There we go, looks kind of nice. Alright, so now let's save our shader. I'm going to go into File, Save As. I'm going to be boring and call mine Tutorial 1. Save. So let's have a look at what our shader looks like in the Material Inspector. So I'm going to drag this down, and you can create a new material by just right-clicking in the project area, Create Material. But I already have one, so I'm just going to select it in here as Tutorial 1. And there it is. However, you'll notice there's no option to change the color. Well, we can add that in pretty easily. So go back into Shader Sandwich, and you'll see that next to color, there is a blue gear. If we click on this gear, it brings up a little panel. Basically, in Shader Sandwich, inputs are what allow you to link these different settings together, animate them, or expose them to the Material Inspector. So what we can do is add a new input by clicking the plus button. Don't worry, I go into detail a bit more in the third part, I believe. So yeah. You'll notice the gear also turns orange. This means that it's linked to an input. Now if we file save again, you'll see that it appears in the material inspector. So now we can change the color at whim. Cool. All right, now to add the texture. So let's add a new layer into the albedo layer channel. Click. You'll notice it overrides the old one. Don't worry, we'll fix that up in a bit. First, we're just gonna make it display a texture though. 
So up here you can actually change what the layer represents, what it shows, be it a gradient, a colour, a texture, or some noise, cube map, there's plenty to choose from. In this case, we can click in there, and select from Resources, Texture. So now we can actually go ahead and select a texture. I'm going to select the little dude texture, or the icon for masks. Now you'll notice it's not displaying anywhere. This is because textures require an input in the Material Inspector to actually be selected. And Shader Sandwich knows this, so it's added this little exclamation mark here, which is just a notification. If you click it, it'll tell you that Texture and Cube Maps require an input to function correctly. Would you like to add one automatically? If we just click Yes, then it'll all work. And if we hit File Save, you'll see that it's added a texture directly in here. Cool. Alright, so now to actually get it to blend correctly. If you've used GIMP or Photoshop or the majority of different image editors, you'll understand blending modes, but I'll try and quickly cover it for those who haven't. I'm not going to deny I'm pretty bad at explaining this. There are plenty of sites out there that will explain blending modes a lot better than me, so just do a Google search if you need to. But anyway, in computers, all colours are stored using a set of numbers. These numbers in general are red, green, blue, and alpha, and different mixes of these numbers produce different colours. For example, for my tomato red, it's represented as 255 red, 37 green, and 0 blue. Now in colours, when using red, green, blue, alpha, there are generally two different ways. There's the 0 to 255 for each value, which is what Unity pretends to use, and then there's the 0 to 1, where 0 would be black and 1 would be complete red. Now, in shaders, it uses 0 to 1. However, Unity displays 0 to 255, so it can be kind of confusing. Apologies about that. But anyway, so in shaders, these colors are represented by numbers. So when you want to blend two of them together, you're actually blending those numbers together. And as such, you can do a lot of different things, such as simply interpolating them, like standard mix does. Try dragging the mix amount to see what that does. But you can also add the numbers together, subtract them, multiply them, divide. There's all sorts of different things you can do. So in this case, we want to multiply the two numbers together. So select Multiply. And as you can see, that's created the effect we want. Now if we change the color, the texture changes as well. Alright, cool. So now let's hit File, Save. I can now go ahead and select my texture in here. And you can see it works pretty well. So the last thing to add is the ability to control the specularity, or where the shine appears. Well, there's a pretty handy little layer channel here that we can use for that, so let's do that. I'm just going to add a new color there, and then I'm just going to add an import for it. So now when you adjust that, you can change how shiny the object is, be it extremely reflective, or extremely dull. One thing you might be wondering is why we can't change the size or the sharpness of the specular highlight. That'll be coming in the next tutorial, and trust me, there is a good reason. Alright, well, we're done. I'm going to hit File Save, and have a look at what it looks like outside. So now you can change the specularity, the color, the texture all working pretty well. Alright, cool. Well, that's the end of part one of the beginner tutorials. Hopefully that all made sense. If it didn't, leave a comment and I'll try and answer. But uh, yeah, okay, you're well on your way to becoming a Shader Sandwich Master. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next part where we add something a lot more interesting to it. Okay, thanks for watching. See you guys later.